Hello, I'm Katherine Heitman. I'm a student at City University of Seattle. This is for a class called Effective Organizational Communications. Today I am talking about factors influencing group communication. The first factor is cohesiveness, which is a way to describe the attraction of the group to its members. Cohesive groups have a feeling of belonging or group unity. There is a feeling of loyalty among group members. Individuals within cohesive groups are committed to the group's goals. These same individuals will feel pressure to follow the group norms, which can also be thought of as the group's culture. Norms are the rules determining behavior and the way the group interacts. A danger of norms in highly cohesive groups is conformity or compromising an individual perspective in favor of that of the group. Individuals conform because being exposed to the opinions of others will influence their thinking. Sometimes time constraints limit alternatives. Authoritarian leadership and social pressure may be factors as well. Conformity is not necessarily a bad thing. A group must have rules and goals to which all agree in order to function. However, extreme conformity can lead to groupthink, which is detrimental. Groupthink occurs when a group is so concerned about avoiding conflict and maintaining harmony that it leads to faulty decision making. You may ask, how can we avoid groupthink? There are several methods a group can employ, each member offering constructive criticism, breaking into subgroups, and ensuring diversity within the group. An important tactic to avoid groupthink is advocacy. Offering an alternative perspective creates an environment of positive conflict where discussion is encouraged. A devil's advocate takes an opposing stance to test a group's decision. They do not necessarily need to agree to that stance as it is a, it's a driver to initiate an argumentative process. A dialectic inquiry also proposes an opposing stance but adds a viable alternative. For instance, instead of simply disagreeing with the group decision to fire Catherine for her insubordination, one might suggest placing her on written warning for a specified period. What I have been describing are forms of conflict. Many people avoid conflict, but discussion about issues produces well thought out decisions. A leader is not necessarily a manager. It is a person proficient at using communication skills to motivate others, and they know how to utilize control. There are four approaches to leadership. The traits, or great leaders are born perspective, refers to the behavior, personality, or physical appearances. Style focuses on behavior and is typically broken into authoritarian, participative, and laissez-faire, which describe the spectrum from making all the decisions, sharing in the process, or hardly being involved. Situational leadership describes a flexible leader who uses different approaches depending on the circumstance. Finally, functional leadership takes place when any number, member of a group performs a leadership role, such as proposing a solution, developing a procedure, or encouraging participation. Margaret Mead demonstrated great insight when she said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Groups are prevalent in all aspects of our lives, and because each is an interdependent system, successful communications within those groups will create a synergy greater than our abilities as individuals.